Welcome back to episode 121 of the Block Runner podcast. You got Will and I, man, here. In a whole new environment. New environment. I guess if you're <clears throat> a long-time listener, it doesn't really matter. All you could do is listen. Wait, no. We should sound better, too. We we will definitely sound better. Yeah. I didn't. I forgot about that, actually. Oh, wow. so yeah. New, new digs. A lot has happened since we recorded like a full-length one-hour ep. Um, right? Do we have like an exact date when the last one was? <laughs> Oh, uh, actually, I just closed it, but it <laughs> no, was, it's dude. been a long time. Let's just put it that way. And a lot has happened. So there's, yeah, a lot of stuff has happened and, um, and yeah. we're yeah. going to get back into it. So if you're listening in via audio, make sure you watch us on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, because you see our whole new setup, dude, you can see the setup. It's probably a little bit more engaging with all the content that we're going to be showing. Oh yeah. We got live camera switching going on here. Yeah. So I mean, th- that's right. Yeah. We urge everyone I mean, I know podcasts are like, it's good listening material, right? It's this kind of content you want to digest. Like I listen to podcasts every time I go to the gym, dude. Yeah. And you're not watching it, right? No. It's just in your ears. So, yeah. So we got to fulfill the obligation for that audience, right? That's what we're doing right now. So yeah. we're getting back on our grind. This is the first recording in, I'm going to say a year, maybe. Yeah. It's been about a year. Roughly. It Man, feels like it's been at least a year. That year has been extremely busy though. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you guys remember if you and long time listeners do. We've been doing a lot of stuff yeah. leading up to whenever we kind of cut off the one hour long form content. You know, we talked about the metaverse. Since uh, since then, it's like it exploded yeah. in notoriety. Everybody wants to figure out how to get in. Yeah, everybody wants to understand what it is. All of a sudden, the metaverse is cool. Yeah, and we spent two years before it was cool talking about it. Talking about it. To largely 10 people, 15 <laughs> yeah, people. Roughly not many people were interested back then, but yeah. Yeah. So now we got to get back on our game. Now that people are interested, people want to know like, well, why are there so many big tech companies organizing their efforts to, you know, contribute to some, the metaverse in one way or another. Right. So here we are, dude. We're restarting. That's going to be one main focus, like as far as like discussion points for us. For sure. Forward. I mean, even um, the metaverse got so popular. The Bank of England is talking about the metaverse. She, <laughs> which is insane. And they're they're claiming that financial transactions in the metaverse could destabilize all of finance. <laughs> like that's crazy. Well, I I I, I, <clears throat> I think I had tweet. I, there's a tweet somewhere from me that a thought I had. I think the metaverse at some point is going to roll out. Right now, people are kind of regarding it like as a joke. We made a Mark Cuban reaction video like yeah. not long ago, or maybe it's going to be posted soon. But the point being, people are kind of like they're disregarding the metaverse and like jokingly the same way they did Bitcoin and NFTs yeah. early on, right? So yeah. this is just this is normal, typical human behavior. Like when it comes to new in- new innovations, there's like a a period of like mass understanding that needs to happen so that takes a few years yeah right yeah i mean mark cuban is shitting on the metaverse good sign yeah regular people are shitting on the metaverse another good sign yeah but my prediction is it's not until like these metaverse economies grow to the scale of like a competitiveness with a real world yeah. economic activity compete with gdp of nations gdp of nations because the, the metaverse has that potential right 100 percent. if not surpass yeah. So once that happens, then you're going to start to see, you know, yeah, destabilization of of real world economies. I think in a For little sure. bit because the incentives to uh, you know labor yourself physically are going to look much less appealing than than you know laboring well, yourself in the digital sense, right? I mean, we have counterparts to this, and anything that goes from analog to digital, yeah, it has a 10x like upgrade. Hmm. And so when you're talking about like the traditional commerce now to e-commerce and, and then to the metaverse, we're going to see tons more transactions. I mean, everything is going to be considered a transaction just because everything is tracked, right? It's on yeah. the blockchain. Uh, whenever <coughs> you and I do a cash transaction, it's not registered in volume, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So in the metaverse, it's going to be, you know, potentially 10 times bigger. I mean, they're already predicting the metaverse being $12 trillion big. <sighs> Yeah, and that's <clears throat> so. Yeah, that that's the big reason, right? Why, why are all these companies, you know, uh, racing to to get to this? Uh, yeah, metaverse realization. It is because of that. These these projections of a multi-trillion-dollar economy, right? right? Business opportunity. So, 
yeah, right now it's not that obvious, like what it's going to look like, what are the components of it, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to make up all that, you know, uh, that those value flows. But nonetheless, it's it's because we're all we're already living in like a two D metaverse type scenario. Like, yeah, you know, basically in squares. Yeah, so it's not a hard to fathom of, of you know if we're gonna increase the uh, immersiveness of our already like addictive behaviors, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and then introduce like. Um, economic opportunity mm -hmm. on top of that like that's accessible to anybody on the planet like yeah how could game you not, over how could you not dude how could yeah. you not that's it <laughs> how could you not no, i totally agree um yeah, yeah so uh, in, in other news potentially crypto might collapse right in front of us <laughs> yeah i mean uh, allegedly according to totally this holy collapse this document so what does that mean dude does that mean i'm right do we have to make a new thumbnail <laughs> it's my turn it's like, like i was, I was right. right like the way you did it <laughs> Dude, well, I'm not all the way right yet, right? Well, definitely not. But you're not. seeing signs of maybe I could be right. You could be, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So, yeah, tell me about that because so, we've had discussions for years yeah. about the, you the, know, how's the government going to react to all of this, yeah, right? For Bitcoin, sure. crypto, DeFi. I mean, NFTs, I don't think they're not going to rub government, yeah. you know, it's still potentially uh, SEC considerations for NFTs. Like, there's still regulation, I mean, yeah. you know, impending for NFTs, too. But, yeah. but this is yeah. different. So we did a video on Tornado Cash just a few days ago. Uh, make sure you watch us on, on that YouTube uh, video. Mm -hmm. And we explain, you know, what has occurred with Tornado Cash. And what happened was Tornado Cash has received sanctions from the United States, where the sanctions make anyone any eth address that has a connection to tornado cash has used tornado cash is now in violation of the sanction and therefore is illegal hmm. and so i in this article here um did the u.s government just declare war on crypto um the founder of tornado cash simply is saying that we didn't build this for money laundering we built it for privacy, privacy. Yeah. and that they were using it themselves as a pro to protect their own privacy of transactions, which if you look at the constitution, it's kind of important, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so we have the founders of tornado cash trying to build a tool that's completely decentralized. And it's basically just smart contracts, right? It's just a smart contract. Yeah. Or it's like, yeah, it's like all dApps, you know, it's just an interface that users interact with just to deposit their crypto funds into, I guess. Yeah. And then some function is executed with the smart contract Correct. programming and then Correct. some valuable service was just fulfilled, yeah. right? That's the beauty of uh, Web3 and all these smart contract, the program programmability of That's it right. all, right? So It's literally that simple. You yeah. send ETH to the smart contract yeah. and that ETH is being pooled along with other people's submission into the smart contract. And then you can take out that same ETH using a different ETH address. Yeah, And then all of a sudden you don't really know which ETH is which, yeah. and you've had a private transaction. Wow. It's that simple. Yeah. And uh, it's almost like a swingers jar situation type thing where everybody just throws in their keys into a big jar. You never know who you're going to pick out. Whoa. Then, I've never heard of that. No, dude. You've never been part of that club? No. Okay. <laughs> That's never good, heard of good that. to know, dude. Now I know you and Dahlia <laughs> aren't like super freaks or nothing oh, like that. Yeah. I've that's never amazing. heard of that? That's amazing. I never thought of that. Okay, dude, shit. We need to go to some <laughs> events, dude. <laughs> maybe you guys, it means you guys have a good relationship. You're not down that like weird rabbit hole yet. We're like, so, like keep you, it interesting. You, you need to like go down these like kink holes yeah. just to like <laughs> stay viable as a couple. You know what I mean? That's insane. You never heard of that? Are you never, serious? never heard of that. I didn't think that. Well, how was that? I didn't even know that's a possible yeah, thing. These are swinger parties, dude. You literally drop your keys in a jar? In a jar. Then you just you get one out. And sh we're going home together, dude. We're banging it out, you know? So how how do you know? Like, does it have a number on there? Like, how do you? I, 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 sh I don't know. <laughs> I dude. need to understand the logistics, <laughs> well, man. <laughs> fuck the logistics, dude. It's, it's not about logistics. It's just show up and, you know. But how do you know which house to show up, though? It's like, does it have an address? You'll or? figure it out, dude. Don't worry <laughs> about that. So. Don't worry about those details. <laughs> Wow. But the point is, it functions similarly, right? Like you just, well, yeah. It's a pool, like you said. And then you don't know the source after the fact, like whenever it's correct. being distributed, which is... 
so valuable so in a lot of cases. Yeah. North Korea hackers like Lazarus Group, they're using mm-hmm. this smart contract to launder funds. Like they steal transactions or they steal money. They steal crypto specifically. And um, they steal it from bridges or exchanges, wherever it is. Yeah, some of the biggest hacks of this cycle is associated with were Tornado funneled Cash. through Tornado Cash. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably why the uh, eyeballs were so glaringly, you know, right. fixed on this protocol. Just because, well, that's a lot of money. I think in total it was like seven or nine billion or something, yeah, something like that like was that, moved yeah. through Tornado Cash. I mean, that it's yeah. not a small fish. Yeah, that's a lot of funds. That's a lot of. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of stolen. Well. Yeah. I don't want to say, you know, Tornado Cash is not for money laundering. <laughs> money launderers. I mean, even this article, yeah. money launderers launder money. It's the same argument as like Bitcoin is not for money laundering. Right? Correct. But, but I think Bitcoin has been known to. Well, it's been allegedly. A, how, how, do you, how would you ma- launder money with Bitcoin? Uh, I, mean, it's oh, probably, I guess. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I could think of ways. But yeah. I think it's easier workarounds to like a legacy system if you can like move your money through, uh, you know. Yeah, Bitcoin. think of if you stole some Bitcoin, you could say, I'll send you some Bitcoin, you give me a car, and it's effectively laundered. Okay. Yeah, there's that. But the point being, like, you know, so this is interesting, right? So this is the main narrative of why Tornado Cash is, is yeah a protocol yeah. that needs not even regulation, just complete banishment from use right because of the the existential threat i guess of this being like a main vehicle or tool by, by bad actors to leverage as far as like money laundering you gave me an idea okay let's hear it. Uh, it i think there might be a technical solution to this mm, i like to hear that so, so what does that mean so <laughs> what if let's say you're trying to legitimately use tornado cash what if in order to use it, you had to KYC an ETH address? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I want to make a transaction between you and I. Okay. And I I want to send you one ETH. Okay. And I don't want you to know what my like source of funds are. So I'll send it to Tornado Cash and then I, and then I send you one ETH. I see. Right? Okay. So what if... In order for me to use Tornado Cash, I need to KYC my original source ETH address. Mm. And then then I can use Tornado Cash, and then now you don't know where my funds came from. But who does? The government. Ah, uh, <laughs> lame. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. They, they, they're, the government yeah. is afraid of money launderers. Mm-hmm. They, the government needs to make sure that your money is not coming from illicit sources. Yeah, but you Which think, is reasonable. You think the people leveraging the the protocol for privacy sake, they're trying to remain private for, amongst Between, them peers, or like yeah, it's really to be well, I know, private amongst but, these like I mean governing bodies, because it's it's like if you're I, if you're leveraging Tornado Cash, it's almost like it's feels private like, to everybody. Yeah, it almost feels like it's by default you're you're trying to avoid something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you see, but that's it that's not like, necessarily true though. I guess. But, you know, how are you going to report taxes on, like, Tornado Cash, you know, activity? I, I would assume you don't because, like, it just fucks with the whole trail of, oh, yeah, of sure. everything. So if you're a user of that whole platform, I, I think it almost implies, like, you're not, you don't have future obligations yeah. towards any third party. And that's a good point. Party, well, you know? What you're alluding to is that it's either all private or it's not private. And mm-hmm. that's it. Yeah. And so that's that's the real debate here. You and I were having a different kind of debate earlier. Mm-hmm. But the real debate here is the United States does not like privacy transactions oh, because no. anything could be happening within oh, yeah. those privacy it, transactions. It obfuscates those paper trails, right? All, all the uh, value flows of an individual. So it's not easy to... So if you're going to persecute somebody over something, you got you to gotta <laughs> prove it. Yeah, you got to prove things. Yeah. yeah. So... If you're using tools like this, it just makes their lives so that's the debate. Impossible. Should we be able to have private transactions? And and according to the Constitution, the answer is yes, obviously. Yeah, but according and, to reality, so according to reality, no. the United States is infringing on a constitutional. All right, dude. Amendment. That's interesting. Well, let's see if this goes to like some Supreme Court level. That would be interesting. Tornado Cash versus the versus United, the, uh, U.S. Treasury. <laughs> Like I mean, I if I were Tornado Cash, I would take it to that level. Yeah, I would. I mean, this is that'd be one hell of a battle, dude. And if you're looking for like marketing for your 
future spinoff Tornado Cash 2.0 once yeah. you inevitably win. win your case. Yes. This is a great... Dude, Tornado Cash needs to do this. They do. And the community needs to bound, support, it. support them. and like sure. Bound, bound together. Because now we're having like trickling effects. So we could segue into this discussion. Yeah. MakerDAO is like starting to <clears throat> discuss, you know, deleveraging any risk associated with supporting centralized assets as a collateral base for their protocol, right? So, yeah. I mean, and the reason for this is because these sanctions are being imposed, like you said. The government, U.S. government to be specific, has reared its big, ugly face for the first time and like let the world know yeah. this is what we could do. And, and you exactly, yeah, you you kind of like made it pretty clear to me today. It's like, dude, it doesn't matter if you're centralized or not. Like this was a purely decentralized protocol yeah. operated and governed by a DAO. Yeah, everything Web three advocates for, right? Yeah, and it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally gone. wiped off the face of the web. Do you can't even like look them up? Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you Tornado Cash. <laughs> It's actually kind of like sad. Oh, it's like poor, poor, poor little fella, you know? <laughs> it's like somebody died, dude. <laughs> poor little. Yeah, okay, right. let me go to CoinGecko. Let's go to Torn. And let's see what the market is saying. So it's down 6.7%. It's, it's probably, yeah. Yeah, it, it took it's, a huge. It's taking a little tumble. Yeah. So let's go to their site. So, of course, because this is completely decentralized, you can still access Tornado Cash via their smart contracts. Absolutely. And this but, is just U.S. sanctions. So, I mean, it's U.S. users, right, that really need to be concerned? Yeah, correct. So, yeah, that's why you're not seeing, like, a, a Luna-type situation, right? It's not a 99%, like, sell-off. Yeah. Right? It, like, the, 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 the fundamental value of the, of the protocol still exists. The smart contracts are probably still in operation, but... Okay. And their website, the website is not. no longer works. <laughs> it doesn't say anything like uh, FBI no. is like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <Yeah. laughs> Usually it does, doesn't it? Um, but I guess not in this situation. Not in this situation. It's too, it's too fresh. I'm not too sure fresh. what exactly happened to the site itself. You I don't know if the founders it. took it down. Okay. Wow. Um, but well, like you said, the biggest point here is that it doesn't matter if you're centralized or decentralized, the government can can come in and like take your business basically yeah it just shut down the show yeah um and that's the biggest deal here because you were what you were arguing is um well we're gonna get into this in a few seconds about talking about um maker dow die because yeah. now they're considering depegging their die token <laughs> with usdc yeah so which is you know, we're going to talk about that in a second. But the, the larger point here for Tornado Cash is the government can step in, take down your business. Doesn't matter whether you're decentralized or not. They could decide to take down Bitcoin or Ethereum. Well, okay, you got to really define take down. Like, it, it's so, just their attempt at, at uh, control. Um, right? Because you yeah, can't. Yeah, let's, let's define what I mean by taking down. Yeah. Um, so, f first, let's let's confined to the discussion of tornado cash they sanction tornado cash but humans technically you can still access a smart contract and That's use right. it even if you're in the u.s technically you could still, you use, still use this it. thing right yes. unfortunately i don't know if like the penalties have been like clearly defined yeah but they calling of criminal penalties that means like yeah. most likely you're going to be charged with some sort of felony type situation right right, right? which I, mean, I don't think anybody wants that no, but some might s skate by. Basically, what I'm saying, like, technically, they didn't really do anything. Like, they, no. they didn't technically, they didn't implement anything, any real tangible walls. Well, I guess they did. They took down the fucking site, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think you can still interact with smart contracts yeah, and stuff. If you know how to bypass, like, the, the front end stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can still leverage the protocol if you really wanted to, you know. Yeah, take the risk. Which is kind of like the, uh, another main point. Like, you. The government has this much power, but they don't have the power to kind of like really erase it. Like Correct. it's functionality from the world. Yeah, right? it's just like they couldn't have the power to take down BitTorrent. Or Bitcoin or anything. Or anything, ETH. yeah. Yeah, because... <clears throat> and that's that's important to note, I think. But it, because there are things in the crypto Web3 space that I think the government does have the ability and power to mm. just completely wipe off the face of the earth as far as like functional utility. Which is alluding to the, our USDC die yeah. discussion. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> America is sort of a big market. 
So if you take down, <laughs> yeah. if you prevent Americans from accessing it, you're kind of yeah. limited, right, as a, a as a sort of a business. Sure. Now, now, I'm not sure what the business model is for Tornado Cash. They do have a token, obviously, so that, that probably is the business model. Mm. But uh, but ultimately, if the government doesn't like it, they'll they'll figure out some way to, to slow it down at least. Yeah. So we have these sanctions for Tornado Cash. Um, so let's talk about, can you explain a little bit about what's going on with MakerDAO and the DAI debt collateralized position being pegged to USDC? Well, this is literally like breaking like an hour before we even start recording. So like it's happening now where these discussions are they're <laughs> the future governing platform of, of humanity called Discord, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> within Discord where all DAOs exist and live, you know, which is pretty hilarious when you think about it. Yeah. Dude, but Discord is upgrading. I don't know if you guys saw there, they've implemented forums, forums within yeah. Discord now. And I know if it's because of all this DAO stuff, you know, it's like I think they want, they literally do want to exist as like the, uh, a DAO infrastructure component. Right. And yeah. it makes sense. It's a lot of real the time converse conversation. That's the way better. The community building aspects of discord is so important. Um, and then, yeah, they're just enhancing it with the forum stuff, which is how proposals are probably going to go through mm. anyways. So that's what's happening right now. If you're a subscriber to a uh, maker DAO's discord channel, <laughs> you can hmm. probably chime in and see the discussion live, which is, <clears throat> you know, now because of all these sanctions that are happening, well, this one major sanction, not all which, of them. Which has huge implications. This could be a first domino. Yeah, that's what we were speculating, right? Yeah. Like Because, you know, Tornado Cash, I think, has, like, the most egregious, like, uh, offense in the eyes of, you know, any governing body just because it's a clearly over-leveraged tool for, like, bad actors. Yeah. So it's a good, like, first target, potentially. But, yeah, that's not to say, you know, the government doesn't exercise this newfound uh i don't think it's newfound it's 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 always been like within their uh portfolio of power right but <clears throat> who's to say they might want to take down stable coins next essentially hmm. right so the discussion amongst these protocol founders and these DAOs is like okay let's let's look at what it is we're tapped into as far right. as like an ecosystem like what centralized assets are contributing to i don't know the stability of our ecosystem stability of a product that our you know protocols are producing so in make your doubt situation it's die mm -hmm. right in order to produce die users have to inject collateral right. assets into their protocol right yeah and a big one is usdc or if i'm not mistaken yeah. the, the peg of that so now is the time to think. Well, what could happen in another potential doomsday scenario with the you know U.S. sanctions uh, circle, which is the I think the uh, product maker of USDC, right? Yeah, yeah. And circles, they what they did was they froze all USDC associated to the Tornado Cash yeah transactions. So you said froze. <laughs> yeah, and I need to verify this, but. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm thinking, because let, let me see if I can... Um, I don't understand that on a technical quick, level. Pros. Here it is. Uh, said Maker Dow, Chris Black to decrypt. They could say tomorrow that peanut butter is illegal. If you buy, use it, eat it, you're going to jail. And and nobody's going to buy it or use it. That's called totalitarianism. Uh -huh. uh, the U.S. government won't be satisfied until the possibility of individuals transacting digital money anonymously is eliminated. Uh, there is no cryptocurrency that can't be used by bad people, said Blick. So all open yeah. blockchain transactions is susceptible to this kind of attack. The only way for the government to solve this is to have full knowledge of every single user's identity. See, that that was my solution to the Tornado Cash thing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, of course, a non-starter for many in community built on the principles of decentralization, privacy, and anonymity. Mm -hmm. um, man, I, I wish consider... Yeah, see, many are having to choose with compliance with law and adheres to such ideological commitments, yeah, yeah, which is, it's interesting. Yeah. Right? So I guess right now the discussion amongst MakerDAO is, okay, with this new existential threat that has always been looming, but I guess wasn't really, like, taken seriously up until this t tornado cash debacle. Yeah. It's like, now they're fucking serious about it, right? Everybody's, me in particular, I've been speculating, like, this is going to be how the government 
you know, injects its presence into, to, into things it doesn't like, any kind of DeFi products. Yeah. And so it's coming true. <coughs> Hence, I was right. Thumbnail image. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not all the way right. I was somewhat right. But we'll see. Yeah. But they're explaining, like, you know, there's there's components to, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrencies that the government might find, you know, not beneficial or not in con- in conjunction with what their own ideologies are as far as like how they need to govern their own people's like transactions and stuff like that right yeah and you know so what is their response it, could they do it yeah. across the board potentially well maker is is uh, ha- is in an interesting position because yeah usdc is a centralized cryptocurrency right Mm -hmm. basically you stable coin it's a stable coin that's pegged to the dollar and it's backed by a bank account with that dollar Mm -hmm. and so at at any moment apparently usdc can be frozen from a technical perspective which is weird i need to verify this but i remember reading in this article um if i can find it i'll 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 note it here in, in the show notes here yeah but uh but if it can be frozen then MakerDAO has absolutely the right, has a right perspective as to they potentially need to get rid of USDC. Yeah. And not only them, but everybody else. Because mm-hmm. the, the government could just easily just say USDC is bad. But my argument against what you were saying is it's very unlikely that the United States would just prevent USDC from like persisting. Mm. Because... They're preventing tornado cash from persisting because it is being yeah. used for illegal activities. Yeah, but and, and so, uh, but again, the point is, the point could. is that it's possible. It's possible, yeah. And correct. that's why you like if any responsible like uh, fund manager or whatever has yeah. to like account for all vectors of possibility, right? And then come up with a hedging strategy as yeah. a result of that. And that's essentially what Maker DAO is. It's just one giant like fund management you know dow yeah (laughs) you know the the community has to govern all this collateral in in order to support the stabilization of the end product which is this this die stable coin and and die is very critical to the overall DeFi ecosystem it is kind of like what got the show started in ethereum's DeFi world a lot of the DeFi primitives rely on the stability of die so if some type of situation were to occur that you know all of a sudden crushes the confidence and then it crushes the actual um i guess technical viability of of that stable coin like it has gonna have rippling effects throughout all of ethereum's ecosystem like it, that would yeah. be like one of the biggest doomsday type scenarios like overall yeah 100 percent agree i mean imagine if so so like it's like you have to consider like the the Dude, the doomsday event of like a U.S. sanction attack on I don't know, you know, but centralized. I feel like the consideration needs to be on the treasury manager, but it's not like a an ex- existential threat from a business perspective. But but they do have to consider it. I mean, imagine a scenario where Luna didn't crash, and MakerDAO was was leveraging completely decentralized stable coins, algorithmically based stable coins. Okay, and they started accepting us ust as luna. as a luna as a uh a, a backed collateral yeah and all of a sudden luna takes a dump because someone decides to manipulate the algorithm as it did right? as it did yeah and it it would completely destabilize all of yeah cryptocurrency because yeah. die is very important absolutely and so that's the implication if you go to decentralized i mean you're you're susceptible to something like that i see and we've seen it we've seen it already with uh, luna well that's the thing about the u.s dollar right like how how everything is is. everything is still pegged to it even though we're trying to create like new monetary systems and whatnot like bitcoin is still valued in in tandem to like u.s dollars right oh one bitcoin's worth x amount of dollars like that's really what matters at the end of the day because the, the dollar is really what people want to spend yeah the dollar is really the asset that <clears throat> at the end of the day well is the true valuable component to any of these like you know financial well, scenarios <laughs> well one day if bitcoin becomes a world reserve currency then everything's going to be pegged to the bitcoin and it's going to be so yeah. many satoshis for and that's exactly what their maker is proposing is like how about we take this usdc and uh, let's just buy a bunch of eth yeah 
And if we like we just talked about, ETH is on its way to a merger event, which is going to yeah. make it deflationary, have much more like Bitcoin value propositions to it. It's yeah. going to be more scarce. Yeah. Uh, I, it's a valid strategy. It should, you know, make it less volatile, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's going to be Bitcoin and ETH. It's going to be one and one the same in the sense. So, yeah. And I'm trying to get it done. Dude, enough of this. What are you shit. doing here? Why don't you subscribe already? Subscribe. Isn't it obvious? Yeah, go subscribe. Just subscribe. But nonetheless, it's not it's not stable. I mean, even though it's gonna be less volatile, it's still not considered for sure. Uh stable enough to be uh, you know And especially uh, post merge when people are lining up their queue in order to sell their state ETH. Mm -hmm. I mean it's gonna completely destabilize the, the price. Yeah. So that's the trade off they're discussing, right? Do we do we trade off the existential threat? Of any U.S. sanctions have like because uh, fifty percent I think of USDC's like collateral pool is or no of MakerDAO's collateral pool is yeah. USDC. Yeah. So that's a cataclysmic event if that were to happen. So to hedge against that, let's just convert all that to ETH, something that's not sanctionable. Yeah. But you you could talk about this next. It it, it is sanctionable still technically. But, yeah. Yeah. And but now you you're exposing the protocol or the ecosystem to the volatility of ETH, the ups and down swings, and what that could do as far as like stability yeah. across the board. So this is not easy, man. Yeah. <laughs> one I, I, one thing about like being in this space for this many years now is like, dude, everything's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no easy anything. Like when you're trying to build, you know, you're trying to create ecosystems. Like that is fucking hard, man. So yeah, well, I feel I feel for MakerDAO right now. <laughs> well, what would be the solution? I mean, I don't know, dude. Uh, maybe maybe you're right. You just hedge. Just say you yeah, keep yeah, yeah. thirty percent in USDC, thirty percent in USDT, thirty percent in E, thirty percent in Bitcoin. Yeah. And wrapped Bitcoin, and all of a sudden, you're you're sufficiently diversified. Diversified. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, shit. If you, yeah, I don't know if that's enough or not. But yeah, that's the discussion that needs to be had. That's the consensus that needs to be made among the maker community <laughs> so they got a lot ahead of themselves and i know it's this is just like the first domino every DeFi protocol and community is going to have to have these discussions right so yeah like you're saying maker is in a tough position i mean feels like everything in crypto is always going to be in a tough position yeah but uh ultimately i think it goes back to sort of if you've been watching the podcast for a while my position is if the united states does anything that depresses the value of the technology meaning they start they stop supporting it they sanction everything mm -hmm. they're the ones that are going to be left behind mm -hmm. and all the crypto projects are going to be started outside of the united states yeah coinbase head, headquarters going to be singapore yeah you know everybody every, every silicon valley crypto is just going to be like singapore or yeah vietnam vietnam bvi whatever uh, it is uh, yeah, UK, uh, Australia. Australia, Dubai, and if all these places, and and you're saying the United States could actually do that, like like yeah, they've been known to to make those types of like mistakes. Oh, I don't know if they made a mistake on that scale, just because there's nothing of this much of a threat in their past, like of this magnitude. I don't think so. They've never had to decide they've, like they've should never we embrace lost. or erase. You know, yeah. <laughs> embrace yeah, or erase. That's going to be their ultimate decision. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for real. That's going to be the slogan for, <laughs> for the battle cry. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's tough, man. Because and, and we're seeing it like not just in uh, we're seeing it in adoption too. Just like the the products that are emerging from the Web three space, it's yeah. like the the adoption of these products are are from mostly like non Western, non American. You know. It's true. Um, I mean, corners of the sectors of the earth. Of even population. our Discord, our website, our podcasts, they're all mostly outside of the United States. Yeah. And and I think about this this this, this discussion in context of the metaverse is like the, the ones who get it the least are the ones who see the less value in like a digital society type scenario, which are the ones who have most of the comforts of modern society, right? Those mm. are the Western parts of civilization, right? Like what, they don't see the need for 
creating opportunity in the digital space. Like, yeah. Why, dude? It's like, we all got jobs. Yeah, yeah. We got houses and food and, you we know, want- we could flush our toilets every day and the poop goes down. Like, we're chilling, <laughs> right? Like, what the hell are you talking about? This digital world. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, we, we want to play fun games. Yeah, we want to be entertained. Yeah. Like, when we come home from work, dude, I just want to plop. I want to work. Plop down and, like, you know, plug into some, like, ultra fun thing that you know just burns eight hours of my day and gives, yeah. gives me no return yeah. of actual value yeah. <laughs> i'm just spending making these companies bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger more and more yeah. powerful now they're rivaling the power of governments you know that's where the modern society is at the moment so yeah they're not in any position to embrace like any sort of like oh new paradigm shift of like you know expanding virtual economies and stuff like that and I think that's across the board from all Web3 products. DeFi, yeah, my bank works. I got all these credit cards. Yeah, but you I know, have a great credit score. Why, I, why do I need decentralized finance? I, I yeah. think even Americans are fed up with banks. Uh, the whole <laughs> takes seven days to transfer money. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not saying at some point they won't gravitate over. Like, because, yeah, the, the utility or just the, the improved user experience of like a Web3 app yeah. over like a middleman human operated bank yeah, yeah it's gonna be clear as day at some point but i'm just saying like the the early adopters are the ones who oh are like, for sure yeah you're like right. in dire need for these types you're of right. things you know you're absolutely right yeah yeah there's not gonna be the united states is not gonna be the one that to volunteer yeah. volunteer the dollar and and take bitcoin as a world reserve currency no absolutely not because dude yeah why would yeah everybody wants what we got yeah yeah so why would you give that up but Here's if the thing. you're outside that equation, you know. Here's the thing. Yeah, everybody else can consider Bitcoin as a world reserve currency. Well, and they just yeah. decide. Yeah, and Bitcoin's accessible. Dollars are not as ex- accessible if you're outside, like, you know. the Well, the value of the dollar is going down. So why would too, anyone else use it? That's another, like, factor in all this. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> We, we can like, glorify the dollar all we want in this moment, but, you know, there's lots of evidence suggesting uh, it's, it's near the ha- end. <laughs> it's not going to have the same stature, like, in the near future, right? Status of, uh, or allure. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So, um, Tornado Cash, definitely in, in a weird situation. I, I You're right about MakerDAO and Discord being, like, <laughs> the, the, town hall the real town hall yeah, yeah the real town hall not twitter dude god i hate twitter <laughs> i hate twitter so much dude i wish we didn't have to ever open that website really is that bad Why? actually i say that but it's it's actually very useful i mean that's how you found <laughs> that's how this. we find like every day's like topic yeah <sighs> fuck you're right twitter okay but i just twitter. hate the experience of like being on it Really, but I appreciate the value of like, yeah, like. I mean, y- you've been on Instagram, you've been on Facebook. Nah, I mean, rough. those are way worse. Yeah, I mean, I've been on Instagram for like a minute. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I but I'm on I'm on Twitter like all day, every day. Well, that that's useful, right? Maybe I have like a love hate thing going with it. You know, I find Twitter to be very useful. I yeah. guess it depends who who you follow. Yeah, I think I follow pretty good people, but I don't know, dude. What is it about Twitter? It's just, it feels, uh, why is technology like so simple, man? Like, I don't know. It feels like there's so many features and like. The brain is simple. That's why it placates to the human brain. Yeah. And I sit there and I wonder sometimes like, dude, Twitter like adds like one feature, like every two or three years. Like how, why do they have <laughs> yeah. like th- tens of thousands of employees? What are they doing in the office all day long? Yeah. I think about that, like from all like tech companies. Yeah. What is everybody on Facebook doing? <laughs> Yeah, dude, like the fucking sites <laughs> rarely change. Yeah. You know, you really need like a, t- a th- 10,000 engineers to do that. I mean, I, you know what they're probably actually doing? They're all just like sorting through our data. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> and like um, just mind mapping each person so they could sell us more shit. That's probably what everybody does. Yeah. At those companies. That, yeah. that would make sense. I mean, that's a lot of data. It is a lot of data. So even though like what's happening like on the web front end side doesn't look like much, but like the actual input of like human brain. Yeah, and, and probably their platforms. All these companies that are huge, they probably have a huge R and D department working on AI, working on things to like take this data and like make information out of it, right? <laughs> make like future it's like versions future of future I Man, a digital I Man. Yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, 
Yeah, like look at Google, dude. It's a fucking search engine. Yeah, that in, website hasn't changed in like thirty years or whatever, twenty years, and yeah. they probably have like a hundred thousand employees, maybe more. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I guess if you guys work at Google or Facebook, let me let us know in the comments what the hell you do all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I envision Silicon Valley is like literally just like people just like kicking hacky sacks to each other all yeah, day long, ping pong. fucking playing like I don't know League of Legends and shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> maybe like two or three hours out of the day is like all right, we got some work done. You know? Yeah, I think you're gonna like the Silicon Valley show, dude. Uh, yeah. Oh, you you you've seen most of the episodes, right? No, I saw the first two seasons. Like they still haven't got out the house. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> That's where I'm at. Yeah, I need to watch that for sure. Yeah, it's such a great show, man. It's like, does it does, it's, it, does it, it show? It's a <laughs> like great representation do? of Silicon Valley. Am I am I like on point? Yeah, they they talk about how they they go to other companies and everybody's playing ping pong and <laughs> I fucking yeah. knew it, dude. I told you, dude. Yeah. They have to. It doesn't make like logistical sense. And then they are making so much money, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? It's so weird. Yeah, but whatever, dude. Whatever uh, keeps the engines running, you know. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens with this Maker Dow situation though, because. What they do is going to have ripple effects throughout crypto. Yeah, and this is good. This I like seeing this type of... Oh, yeah, I love... You love DAO shit. conversations, dude. I love DAO shit. <laughs> I love... Why is that? I love the fact that like there's actual like real drama happening. There's there's stuff at stake here. I know, but like this is the shit I've been waiting for because like, the bull market's so fucking lame compared to this kind of stuff because it's like, you know, yeah. everyone's just shilling yeah. garbage... Yeah. non-stop so there's just you can't ever hear like anything of substance like on the you know the social channels yeah, such of the a world. good point this is like a real substantial development like happening in our sector in our industry yeah and the bull market if this was happening <laughs> in the bull market we would have never heard about this yeah we'd be hearing about the next sale that sold out in yeah, 10 but, seconds did you guys see that robot yeah it's like, or that fucking dog or <laughs> this this cat this <laughs> fish that like you know evolves like gargoyles and, and yeah oh dude this like yeah this the strippers like making nfts it's yeah, like yeah, yeah all in type shit you know it's yeah. just it gets overwhelming you know at, at times and pretty boring really well yeah and then it distracts from like you know real progress like none this is like some serious shit that projects need to start you know thinking about and discussing and hopefully new innovations come about like you, you're already theorizing yeah technical ways to uh yeah you know but it, it does like it, it defeats the purpose of tornado cash you have to kyc <laughs> i know, it's I know. Like the exact opposite but but what, what this but maybe, does is maybe, like, maybe there's, it, it, there's it, a decentralized way to kyc where like the information remains yeah. private but it's oh absolutely it's obviously clear that you are using it for legitimate reasons and this is fuel to like the identity race that's has to emerge exactly at some point dude that's such a good space. point like at some point, we're going to have to figure out standards of identity. Yeah. Where right now, we have ENS domains and stuff like that, right? Yeah, that's pseudonymous. That's that's pretty good. But it's something. It's some sort of contributing factor to your on-chain. We've got soul-bound tokens on the horizon, stuff like this. And then you should be able to have an identity that it remains anonymous. You should be able to do that. Yeah. Just as long as the identity has a reputation. That's true. Yeah, I guess. Because it, imagine yeah. if Satoshi was still hanging around with us. He should remain anonymous if he wanted to. But yeah. still be active, mm. like that should be a, a yeah. It could, a just possibility. Be, it could be part of the, like the transaction and instead of you know there needs to be like a it was know, like, it was like a like a, literally a prompt. It's like, do you want to unveil your identity to who you're sending your money to? Yes or no? It's like no, shit, yeah. fuck no, dude, don't do that. It should be complete open source, so I guess, can verify everything. Yeah, you could hide. Can you imagine yeah, Satoshi is, buying his first about. NFT? It's like <laughs> Satoshi buys a Rovi. Oh. That would be breaking sweet. headlines. That would be swell. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very nice, Satoshi. Yeah. If you're by any chance watching, dude, we'd much appreciate you buying a Rovi. <laughs> Literally, dude. That'd be so dope. <clears throat> but yeah, like that. So this adds some fuel to that. So of course, you know, there's more needs for different primitives, I guess, for identity to be yeah. standardized in the Web3 space. And that will contribute to these problems, hopefully. Maybe like ease the minds of these governing bodies a little bit. It's like yeah. there's a little bit of trackability now. You know, there's something, some sort of correlations we could paint between. It's not just these obscure addresses anymore, right? And people who refrain from you know doing these types of uh, 
privacy acts, I guess, I don't know, they'll have some sort of favorable outlook mm. yeah. in the government's eyes. I mean, that's that's still like kind of fucked <laughs> in a way. Yeah. You know. I mean, uh, I'm kind of interested, you know, feels like the United States government is uh, saying one thing and doing another. Like, mm. they're, they're like, we got to protect the Constitution with like weapons and stuff. And then they're saying, all right, every nobody can have private transactions. Yeah. When in the Constitution says privacy is like, you know, one yeah. of the things that we should all have. Yeah. Like, I, I, how how do we navigate something like this? I mean, we, we, we got to be able to fight back. Tornado Cash should be able to fight back because yeah. tools could be used for anything. A car. I mean, you just showed me a video of somebody, you know, just blowing through a red light, killing people. Yeah. I mean, a car is not for, for killing, right? It's not for transportation. All. Yeah. Right. Tornado Cash is not for mon- money laundering. It's for privacy. Mm. It's like... Well, why should, why should, why is there a distinction between the two tools, mm. you know? So, <sighs> man, uh, let me see if I, I think the founder's name is, it was Amin Soleimani. Okay. If he wants to join us on the podcast to discuss the implications of this, you are more than welcome. Yeah. Hopefully you're good. <laughs> yeah. You're <laughs> you know? still, you're still alive. <laughs> yeah. You haven't been sniped by the fbi <clears throat> now they're too busy raiding trump's closet at the moment <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean they're busy but uh but, but yeah, yeah man but this is this is great uh, this is interesting we're back in prime time crypto drama and usually these types of things like i said lead to innovation innovation leads to new markets potential yeah, yeah. which we, now we're getting to the discussions of like what are the things that are going to reinvigorate you know, this crypto market again. Well, speaking about reinvigoration. Because, yeah, this whole topic really brought us back to DeFi, right? <laughs> we had to we had to refresh ourselves, do like a little 30-minute refresher course on like MakerDAO Make and yeah. DAI and all this stuff. Because it's been a minute since like we, uh, you know, spent time navigating through all these different DeFi protocols and seeing what they're up to. It's been a long time since we've been like looked up DeFi Pulse. Yeah. And yeah, we saw that crater of uh, TVL drop off, but that's not to be, you know, I, that didn't surprise me at all. It's just, it's in parallel to the price of Bitcoin. So, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to take a look back at Bitcoin because everything seems to be going up. And I feel like hmm. it's, it's as a result of the ETH merge that's going to be happening September 19th. Yeah, ETH has been, if you pull up ETH chart, it probably looks even a little more aggressive. I don't yeah. know. Let me see if I can. Pull it up here. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a little more aggressive, more pronounced. I mean, ETH does have a lot going for it at the moment in comparison to Bitcoin. So a lot. A lot for going it. for it. Yeah. There's a triple happening associated with it. Yeah. An eighthening. Oh, that's that's what you like to call it. But because it's math, because it's, <laughs> it's math, mathematically, yeah. you know, <laughs> correct. Consistent. Um, but yeah, dude. So I guess we could talk about that. Like what's actually happening then? Well, um, Ethereum is converting from a proof of proof of work to proof of stake. Yeah, which is has been in the talks for a while. I remember back in 2017, you know, the big debate or the dilemma of the time was scalability, right? Mm. Everybody realized ETH is awesome, but man, it's fucking slow and expensive. All this shit, right? So yeah, I remember then on the whole Web three things or no blockchain 3.0 sector came out of nowhere eos iota yeah all these different like entrants like dude we we could do exactly what ethereum does but like at a thousand times transaction speed and cheaper yeah and then like ethereum had to come out vitalik stuff had to publish all these things oh we're gonna do something called sharding and Mm -hmm. even bitcoin's like oh what we're doing lightning stuff like that right so everybody was like discussing scalability here we are five years later (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're just now getting to like what what looks like is like the grounding stages to like the inevitable scaling solutions. Like all this is doing is like enabling the potential for like scaling solutions to exist on Ethereum, right? They yeah. So s- proof of stake by itself is not going to increase no. the speed exactly. or transaction costs that's, or anything like that's that. That's what I'm saying. And I remember those original promises of like, you know, sharding and stuff. Like, yeah, it'll be here like in three or four years. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. We're barely at like the, the staging stage. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so it's going to be converted September 19th from proof of work to proof of stake. And then you can 
bring up ZK rollups or optimistic rollups. Mm. And then I think there was a uh, presentation by Vitalik where the gas fees end up going from like two dollars down to like point zero zero three cents. Oh snap! And That's, so that sounds delicious, dude. I wonder what the implications are for these sidechain trend, you know, blockchains like mm. Polygon and and all of these. I think nonetheless, no matter what, ETH will get recongested again, mm. even in those like uh, in you know, uh, s- scalable. Yeah, but like situations, but it would scale though. Like if it went, I mean, I remember ETH transactions being like two to three hundred dollars, sometimes a thousand dollars. Maybe it'll go as high as a hundred bucks during manias. During after optimistic roll up, oh, and stuff like that. Yeah, so a hundred dollars still crazy for a transaction. It's very crazy, but it's not a thousand dollars crazy for one transaction. But it, it it can't. It's in order for like true, you know, mainstream utility it can't it can't get it can't exceed more than like i think pennies or something you know like well yeah it can't it shouldn't you know it should literally just be like everybody every every human on earth just needs to like pay their fucking gas utility just to interact with blockchain every month you you have you have to think about it though if you're using ethereum you're paying for the high degree of security Mm -hmm. right it's not any other blockchain that's not as big as ethereum Agreed. And so you got to pay well, yeah, for that that's true. as a service, right? If for Ethereum, yeah, if Ethereum just becomes like a like a, a giga settlement layer for giga events, giga for, transactions, whatever. Or for anything, even small events. You're well, still yeah, if, paying but, for that service, security service. Well, yeah, that's what layer two is about, right? So it's like the smaller micro transactions events yeah. can happen on the second layer. But, but the side chain is in, in the event that you... Don't agree that you need such high security, then you use a side chain. Mm. But the side chains, side chains are plugged into the same security layer, right? Of, yeah, of but layer they're one. But so, they're a side chain, so I guess I don't they're know. exploitable potentially. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, so, it's, but that's why they're micro. Yeah, you you go direct to the layer one if you're doing like some sort of big swap or something, some big yeah transaction, right? So yeah, so you're right in the sense that maybe like humanity just comes to that understanding <laughs> it's like it's like transactions are going to be expensive yeah nonetheless ethereum is still logging everything even yeah. if it's like in grouped transactions or whatever from from the layer two side or yeah. whatever layers end up spinning up in the future you know yeah and, uh, and i think polygon studios or polygon um the blockchain they're they're yeah. they're bringing on like several side side chain technologies Mm-hmm. Uh, scaling technologies like optimistic and zk there's like too many to count at this point yeah well you could probably count them but you can't it, it's, it's just you, a lot you can't you can't <laughs> like do deep research on them diligently like speak on every single one of them yeah just, yeah this is a whole research paper it is and by the way like I, I linked you a book um because you're going on a vacation here mm-hmm. soon mm-hmm. no it's like a three-day weekend but yeah <laughs> but yeah. nonetheless you might want to look into it, dude. It's, it's all about the, the ins and outs of ZK Tech. Oh, okay. Yeah. Published by Delphi Digital, by the way. Nice. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll link it in the description or something if anybody wants to read that. But I think we should digest it as much as we can. And, you know, because we're company founders ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, project founders, MetaZone, plug. Plug and not a plug at the same time. Rovies. <laughs> Another plug. The block runner. All this stuff. <laughs> we do a lot of things. But, um... So yeah, we need to understand the, the scaling feature of Ethereum, not just from like a, you know, this perspective, we're trying to, you know, educate whoever's listening, but also from like a business perspective, like what is going to be optimal for our users and stuff like that, right? Right, so, right. So yeah, we'll probably be talking a lot about that in the future. I mean, it doesn't sound that interesting to be honest, <laughs> but no, we're going to try. No, it's very interesting. I, I feel well, like, I feel like Vitalik talking about sharding in 2017 is like us talking about zk rollups and optimistic today because mm-hmm. in the future it's going to matter a big deal yeah well, yeah absolutely yeah, if we're going to get to that stage of where yeah we can uh confidently you know approach the mainstream users yeah of the web yeah be like yeah dude there's all this cool shit to do on web3 you want to plug into the metaverse and all this stuff it's real easy it's you know yeah there's a little bit of a cost to it but you know, we've developed X, Y, and Z, you know, infrastructure protocols to mm-hmm. you know, ease that process and to manage your, I guess, I don't know, 
funds, stuff like this. You know? you know, one thing that I wonder pretty frequently is when is cryptocurrency going to have like an interconnected network of currencies? And I know Polkadot is working on this and Cosmos and there's a lot of projects working on this, a but lot of bridges I feel like yeah. this is a pretty important thing to like figure out. Absolutely. It is. I mean, because otherwise we're... It would be like going to a website, but you have to figure out what network that website is on before you can mm -hmm. get to it. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, William dot the block runner dot com and William represents the network in order to get to the website. Mm -hmm. And then we have another network to get to Google mm -hmm. like that. That would be a terrible Internet. Yeah. So right now, crypto is pretty terrible in that sense. Well, <laughs> you don't think so? I mean, I. I it's it's up to the front end des developers, right? To to uh, when you're plugging into your resources and time into like an app or something like that that's built on Web three. Uh, all that you know. So you should trafficking of resources is happening on the back end side. So what right? you're saying is we should have like some sort of wallet that's a relayer for all the networks. Like yeah, I guess if it's like whatever it is you're plugging into some sort of like a, I don't know. Uh, swapping tool that exists on like this all-in-one DeFi platform or mm -hmm. web app whatever if it's connected to x y and z chains or whatever like i mean as a user i don't think i need to I yeah you wouldn't have to do like anything anything on the front end in order to access those chains yeah exactly because yeah, so, i mean this is just yeah it's developers maturing Right. But man, we've had 10 years of this already, at least. That's not enough. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, man, dude. Man, it feels like... 10 years ain't shit, dude. It feels like we, we should have come up with like... You know how the Metaverse has like the standards forum? Mm -hmm. Like crypto should have some sort of standards forum. Yeah, but I mean, the Metaverse standards forum hasn't really produced... No, much, they haven't, of course. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a We also haven't project. checked in on them in like a couple of weeks. But yeah, I mean, it's... I'm not expecting anything of true value to be uh produced produced from, there, from the to be honest yeah. i i think the standards are going to emerge from the actual builders agreed not not like from a bunch of people just like talking about shit in a room no, no offense i yeah, think it's I mean, important to have conversations no doubt yeah right and to propose ideas and all this shit but that is the purpose of like web3 is like you know, get the community involved too you don't have to have a bunch of graybeards in the room just like trying yeah to like and, I, and i think to solve is like what you're saying is you actually have to build what you believe yeah. the standard should be and you gotta get a community to and adopt to and support. support it yeah right. not, again it's, it's not about the, that forum is like the legacy way of doing of progressing it's like get a bunch of executives in a room and yeah Let's hash it out, bras, and then let's let's go through all of our formalities, you know, and yeah, right. do this stuff. Yeah, I, I, the Web three way is totally different, yeah. radically different. It's like execute, and then let's see if you get traction. Yeah, let's. Yeah, and that let's, becomes let's a standard. Build some shit, and yeah, people. If it if it has some value, people will use it. Yeah, people use it. People will encourage others to use it, and then they'll all become communally aligned to support this thing so it can grow and flourish and then oh by the way they could also become invested with it yeah <laughs> you know through tokens and stuff so it's a beautiful ecosystem dude yeah it's for great. sure so i mean yeah i mean we've been doing this podcast for three years we've seen a lot of maturity <coughs> before our eyes yeah right? yeah crypto DeFi, metaverse now is in the mix <laughs> Yeah, we had periods of this podcast where we, we were like losing our minds yeah, yeah. developing in the metaverse because like we looked like idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Why are these guys talking about Decentraland when like DeFi is popping, right? Like yeah, you yeah. guys are missing out on like what's cool. Right. Right. We're like, dude, we stuck to our guns, man. Like, nah, this is going to be cool too one day. You'll it is see. One day. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> but yeah, that day is, has finally come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's it for our podcast. Um, that was an hour? Yeah, it's been an hour. Let's right see. On, let's let's kind of rehash everything that we talked about. So Tornado Cash, mm -hmm. MakerDAO, a little bit of Metaverse in the beginning. A little bit, a little bit. We came back to the Metaverse at the end. As we should. As we usually do. <laughs> yeah, can't escape it. And uh, then we, we kind of tapped into the zeitgeist of Bitcoin and Ethereum with the resurgence with the uh, Ethereum merge coming yeah, Ethereum merge, big deal. Yeah, we established that, you know, 
tech employees, they really do just kick hacky sacks to yeah. one another all day long. <laughs> uh, we learned that Will is not a swinger. Yeah. <laughs> Very important stuff <laughs> to learn. What else, dude? I think that's pretty good. That was a good hour. It's a good reattempt to getting back into the fold of like having these long form discussions. And we're gonna have. I mean, it's it's a long bear winter ahead of For us. For sure, so we're gonna which have is plenty of time. Which is how we're going to get over schedule it, it and yeah. be consistent with it because now we have less distractions. Yeah, like this started in a bear, and we're re we're starting back. in a bear <laughs> <laughs> again. So. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Block Runner and also at Metazone IO and also Rovi AI. And uh, let us know what you think about the com- conversation. Comment below on YouTube, and uh, and then we're always in there chatting it up as well. So hit us up, join our Discord as well, and then we will catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.